and welcome and can we just like praise the lord for rain let's give god a clap offering because we need this rain welcome this morning whether you are joining us here in person if you're a regular attender if you're a guest if you're joining us online we are so glad to have you here to um, join us as we celebrate uh, Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem and to celebrate a couple baptisms as well. So uh, thanks to all for being with us and um, we will have time of worship, we'll have time of joy and celebration and prayer and praise. So thanks for being with us for all those things. Um, our tradition here this, this Lent has been that each week we look at a different spiritual discipline and how you can use that in your everyday life. And today is Visio Divina. Um, think about art. Think about, um, so we are going to, if you see on the back, you have the water. I use that today because we're going to be talking about baptism and the waters that uh, were troubled and calmed both by Christ, right? And um, so when we look at water, and, and think about what that means. I mean, our very existence depends on that, right? So then we tr go through these five steps of meditation and, and um, kind of a response to those things, some time in quiet, some time in prayer. And you can use any, any art that you want, whatever your, your art form is that you prefer. Um, you know, some people like, um, like very... Uh, contemporary art, impressionistic art, traditional art, um, maybe it's fiber arts, whatever it is, you, you just concentrate on that piece and, and don't try to clutter it up, just use one piece at a time and um, just look at it and reflect and how God might be speaking to you through that. So again, here is, uh, this is for you to take home and if you've missed some of the other Sundays, uh, there are one from the other Sundays out on our memorial stand out there, uh, a copy, some extra copies of each Sunday. So um, think about how you might use that in your devotional time um, going forward. Another long, longer standing tradition we have at Oakland UMC is just to find time to settle ourselves and to bring ourselves fully into the presence of God. So if you would join me in taking a deep breath in and out. Now as you breathe in, breathe in that very essence that is God, the, the worship of God, the praise of God, the adoration of God, and push out all those things that keep you away from that in the world. And now as we breathe in this third time, breathe in and exhale as a prayer. In and out. And now that we have this calm, we center ourselves for worship. Please join me. Jesus, you have walked this road with us many times. Guide our steps and keep us close. Inspire our worship with your loving presence and work in our lives, that your spirit may flow through our lives as we seek to help others walk the journey with you. Amen. And as you are able, please rise and join us to, in the responsive call to worship. In joy we gather this day. In remembrance, we gather this day. In festive celebration and in quiet reflection, we gather to worship and to pray. Okay, now before we sing this song, I need you to practice that because Hosanna to the Son of God. We got to, we need to be excited, right? So let's try that one more time. Hosanna to the Son of God. Oh, see, you guys are quick studies. Okay, so now we will sing Hosanna, loud Hosanna, and take those. You should have some palms. Take those and wave them around. Hosanna to the Son of God. 
may be seated. This morning we begin our scriptures. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do Psalm first, Psalm 118, if you're following along in your Bible. Psalm 118, 1 through 2. And then we will skip down to 19 to 39. So Psalm 118, 1 and 2. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. And then to verse 19. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. We, you are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And then um, from the book of Mark, it's our gospel reading, got Mark 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you. And immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. 
As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying this colt? They told them that Jesus had, what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Glory be to the Father. You may be seated, and if our baptism family would come forward, then the Graves family, we will begin our baptism. Brothers and sisters, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water in the spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without a price. This morning, I present to you Kendall J. Graves and Keelan Elaine Graves. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you as parents, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, answer, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, answer, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in, the un in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, answer, I do. Will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, answer, I will church it's your turn do you as christ's body the church reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to christ if so answer we do will you work, work nurture one another in the christian faith and life and include these children now before you in your care with god's help we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of christ we will surround these children with the community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way of leads to life. Let us join together in professing in the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Virgin Mary, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with who in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Okay, Kindle first. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Are you ready? Let's, let's make sure I get your middle name right. Yours is J, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oops. You get to help me pour the water. There's some imagery for your Visio Divina, huh? Are you ready? Kindle J, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you say hi to these people up here? They want to see you with wet hair. Can you look out there? Oh, that's water, though. And it was warm, wasn't it? Okay. Next. Okay, q and a. You and Elaine, correct? Yeah. Okay, are you ready? It's your turn. You and Elaine, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Don't fall asleep on me. Okay. Look, can you look? They want to see you with wet hair too. Can you tell them all hi? They're just transfixed with the water today. They don't. Yeah. Okay, let's welcome these girls into the, officially into the family of God. Yay! Yay! The Holy Spirit work within you both, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sisters in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate 
in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. That in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, the God of all grace, the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. And all God's people said, amen. And now we are going to sing our song, Our God Claims You, as I get some things to these folks and they get settled. So whenever you're ready, Trevor. is front porch time so any of our young folks that would like to come forward for front porch time come on down we'll do a little short story you guys can help collect some money and um, we'll get a treat that's the best part of the whole deal come on up Henry you know how this goes you can teach the rest of us how it goes huh should we have Keelan and Kendall come up do they, should they come to their first story? Yeah? Okay. Have a seat. Hello. Welcome, welcome. So, Henry, did you have a great week? Eh? You know, I think some days that's kind of me, too. It's like, eh. Some people, they kind of smell, they smell it. They spell it as, as kind of... Uh, like, uh, was it an uh, or was it an oh? Which day was it? Which kind of week was it? Was it an oh week or was it an ah uh, week? Somewhere in between? Okay, okay, that, that works. Okay, so the great thing about that is, is every day, whether we have an uh day or a yay day, we get another chance tomorrow, right? Yeah, and so how do we know that? Where did we hear that? Did we hear it in the Bible? Yeah, because Jesus tells us that, right? He says, he says I'm going to give you grace. And we've talked about what grace means. And that just means that we're forgiven when we say we're sorry, right? So sometimes we have to pray to God and we have to pray to Jesus and say, I'm sorry because I had a really bad day and part of it was my fault. Sometimes we have to say those things. So when we do, then Jesus says, that's okay, let's try again tomorrow. So you're ready to try again? To have a, ah! You think? Yeah? Yeah, yeah maybe. 
maybe. So one thing that these folks out here are really good at, every week they try, try, try to help other people, right? Yeah, and we do that through our noisy offering, right? And this month we are doing um, Midwest Mission Iowa. Thank you. My head was, I had to turn and change my focus there. Um, so Midwest Mission, which is um, a space in Illinois that kind of helps distribute things throughout this part of the country when there are c catastrophes. And they store those things. Um, and what they found out was they needed more mission, mission people in Iowa because a lot of Iowans were going all the way to Illinois to help out Midwest Mission. So now in Jefferson, we have a Midwest Wit Mission, and we can go there and make mats, we can help box up things, and we are going to take a trip one of these days and go down and do that. But what they also need is funds, right, to help with shipping and to help um, with food for volunteers and those kind of things. So... Um, we are going, we have been working on that. Our goal was $500, and I think we're at about $375. So we need about $125 more this month to, for us to send to Midwest Mission, Jeff, or Iowa, right, in Jefferson. So you can take your, Ellen, do you remember how to do this here? Take that and you go and folks will give you some change and some dollar bills and some checks and all good stuff. You just smile at them real pretty and tell them thank you, okay? Oh, we lost a shoe. I'll keep it. <laughs> It'll just fall off again. Um, Eric, you want to run that video? that talks about Midwest. Okay, you are, you have a full bucket. Can you dump it in there? Make sure it all came out. There we go. Got it? Okay. Yay. Okay, Ellen. She, she, just, she just double checking to make sure she got it all. Can you, can you bring it up and, oh, she's getting more from mom. Come, come on up and dump it. Here you go. That was a good plan. That's, that works good. Okay. Can you put your bucket back on the pile? And would you like to hold our treasure chest while we pray? Okay. Are you ready? Repeat after me. Dear God, help us help others so that they can have relief and help after disasters. Help multiply, help multiply these monies, these monies for, your use. for your use. And all God's children said, Amen. I can take that for you, and you can get a treat out of there. Make sure it's a mom-approved treat. There's some different things. Hmm, chocolate chip or Ritz, which is it? There's Teddy Grahams. There's alphabet cookies. Okay, okay, thank you. 
It was a good choice. And now we come to our time of prayer. We, of course, lift up Kendall and Keelan as they begin their faith journey and um, all the ways that we'll each one be able to help them um, on that journey. We also lift up the Regan family, especially uh, Christie's family, um, at the loss of her nephew. And uh, they're doing some, some state swim and stuff this weekend, but then they'll be going down towards the end of the week. Um, I believe the funeral was going to be Friday. So uh, keep them in prayer this week as they're traveling, as they're going back and forth, and in their, and in their sorrow. Um, let's see, I think Norma has an announcement to make, a good one. Oh, yes. Uh, first of all, thank you, though, for all of you are, who are here for the baptism of Kendall and Keelan this morning. We appreciate that. Um, but we were blessed with another great-granddaughter this week. Uh, Tiffany has James Bexley, a baby girl, 6 pounds, 15 ounces, and both are doing well and home. So, And Grandma's surviving too, Lori. Uh, yes, Lori's Grandma Lori there. went yeah. to be with her, so uh, she is doing well also. Great. We uh, do pray for the Zimmerman family and, as well in the uh, loss of Leila. Others. Has anybody got a birthday anniversary this week? For some reason, I was thinking there was something going on this week. Okay. Well, let's take all this and the prayers of our hearts to God in prayer. Lord, we praise and thank you. We thank you for the way that you care for us on our best days and on our worst. And the way you care for us in all those days in between that are just kind of in between. The days that we just go through and think are normal. But we know even in the normal, you are there. That even in the normal, in the everyday, in the routines, that you are a part of that. So be with us in that. Make your presence known to us because some days we just get all lost, lost in the day. Remind us that you are with us even closer than our very breath, that you walk with us, that you are there for conversation, that, that you listen to us, and that you do reply. Remind us also to, to listen, to not just ask, but to listen. Lord, we lift these prayers that we've prayed up. We know that the Reekins are, are suffering as well as the Zimmermans and their losses, and we just ask that you bless them and those, the other families that have lost loved ones. Might you um, guide them? Might you be the embrace that they need? Might you lift them up in their days. And Lord, we have great joys that we celebrate as well, birthdays, anniversaries, and especially babies. We just uh, love that you love us so much that you give us joy in the midst of our normal. We especially thank you today for Kendall and Keelan and the way that they will grow in faith of you of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the leading of the Holy Spirit. May we each um, be on that journey with them and with each other. Because we know that, that we offer, that our goal is to offer Christ to accompany each other on that journey and to kindle a life of faith. And this is where we begin. This is where we start. Lord, thank you for these gifts of starting each day new, of starting faith lives, and in being able to walk each, with each other in our journeys, regardless of when our faith life begins. We love you. 
We adore you, we praise you, and we are joyful for your presence with us. All this we pray in your holy name, and the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time that I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time that I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. Hosanna. Hmm. We, we say that often at this time of year. Um, some folks, um, similar meaning is alleluia, but you know, some, some traditions hide the alleluia for the whole season of Lent and then bring it back on Easter Sunday because Lent has been our time of reflection, right? Our time of of growing deeper in our faith, in our relationship with Christ. And in turn, the relationship with those who are also on the faith journey, that are also moving forward together in faith. And one meaning of Hosanna is adoration, praise, and joy. Adoration, praise, joy. We usually think of that a lot more on Easter Sunday, right? Because sometimes we forget that, that this whole week is holy, that we start with Palm Sunday and we continue through the week, which starts looking a little bleak at some points, right? Knowing now we know these thousands of years later, that we will be able to rejoice in resurrection next Sunday. But in the meantime, we've got work to do. See, we, we need to have the adoration and the joy and the praise. But another meaning or a, um, a, another definition of Hosanna is Lord, save me, right? And isn't that really what this whole week we bounce back and forth, right? Between calling on Christ and saying, God, I need you. Save me from this. Save us from this. And, oh, God, you are so good. So we kind of got extremes there, right? Like, we, like I said with the kids, sometimes it's, woo, and some days it's, ugh. And we know that this week is full of both. And sometimes, as we're working through our devotions, as we're um, living through Holy Week, we might even sometimes feel that visceral effect, you know, that, that emotional, almost physical effect, where we start maybe, maybe Good Friday or maybe Monday, Thursday is just rough on us, right? It's just hard, because we know the story, and we know what will come next, but if we don't forget to feel a little uck on that Thursday and Friday, 
then we haven't taken the whole journey. You know, I've always said someday, now let, let me start this and then I'll give the caveat of why this is not going to work. Someday, when I'm retired, I am going to stop at every historical marker on the highway. And if I miss one, I'm going to turn around and go get it. Go back and read it, right? All those little markers that says historical marker and you never see anybody there. However, I've been told when I'm retired, I'm going to be too busy to stop at every historical marker because your life fills up with all the other things, right? And that's what this week is kind of about. We have to stop at those markers. We have to celebrate or be involved in or be emotional about the things that we will experience, especially towards the end of the week, right? But the whole week is holy. The whole week is called Holy Week, right? So we have to experience all the days. We can experience the days where we kind of feel like, eh, or this is just a normal day. And then we get to the fr Thursday and Friday where we're starting to go, oh, this, this is not so cool. This is not so great. On Saturday, here, here at the church, we're open from 8 to 8 for prayer because after those days of just feeling it deep, sometimes we need to just come in and quietly spend time with God. And so the space will be open. But then on Sunday morning, we get to rejoice. And we will rejoice whether it's raining or it's sunny. We will rejoice whether uh, we have to wear our coat and dig our car out before we go. We are going to rejoice on Sunday morning because we are a resurrection people. So this, this story that we hear is not about a one and done about, oh, it's Thursday, we're done with Thursday, go to Friday. Nope, nope. It's about a journey. It's about living each day to its fullest, not for ourselves, but for God. It's, it's doing some memory work, maybe, of how is it that I have spent uh, Good Fridays before? How is it that I have experienced Easter before? How is it that I remember my baptism either through um, the image of water, through I just gave the girls little stones that can be part of their memory as they begin to grow. And so how it's, it's reflection and it's coming together and it's doing the things that help us experience. Because if we just live through Holy Week, it's not the same. We have to experience it. So that is our challenge this year, uh, this week, as we come forward, is to experience that, to experience all of the Hosanna, right? To experience the adoration, praise, and joy, and to experience also the Lord save us. Lord, speak to me. Lord, be with me. And to go back to the adoration, praise, and joy. Because there's no journey that doesn't have all of those things mixed together, and that includes this week. Let us uh, join together in our, um, in our prayer. Please join me. Loving God, we sing and shout, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. How easy it is to ignore what is to come. Anger, betrayal, torture, and death. Forgive us, Holy One, when we move from the celebration of Palm Sunday to the celebration of Easter without taking time to hear or experience the passion and depths in between. Forgive us for the times we have fallen short. Help us to be faithful to your gospel of love and liberation. Surround us with your enabling grace. Bless us with a community to help us live a life of faithfulness. 
faithfulness to the one who came to teach us how to live and how to love, faithfulness to one for whom we are waving our palms today. Amen. God's steadfast love endures forever. This is not just a phrase from a psalmist. It is not merely an abstract concept, but a true and absolute reality and promise. There is nothing we can do to make God love us any less. The gate is open for all who are heartily sorry, who confess, and who try to live righteously. Rejoice and be glad. Amen. <coughs> And now um, we come to our tithes and offerings. You will see that there is a um, little table right outside the door, um, one box for general fund giving, and one, uh, there's a bag there for, um, for our capital campaign funds, or for our repairs, which we'll be getting started hopefully here this summer. Um, but we, um, we, we take offering that way but we know that we don't offer just financially, right? We, we do offer financially our, our gifts, but we also offer the, the skills that we are given through God. We offer the gifts that we have been given. We offer ourselves to God. And so for all those things, we praise God today as we um, share in our prayer of thanksgiving. And remember that uh, there's also the opportunity to uh, give regularly online. You can get those forms on our website or from the office. And to, um, to do one time, and that's for either of those accounts, to do a one-time electronic as well, or obviously in the mail. So let us pray for all the gifts that we have been given um, in so many different ways. Let us pray. We thank you, Christ Jesus, for your steadfast faithfulness and your humble leadership in our world. Bless the gifts we return to you now, that they may guide others to follow you and walk humbly in your ways. Amen. And now, if you would rise and sing together all glory, laud, and honor.
Now let us join together for the responsive benediction. Go into God's world, humble and kind. Go into God's world, gracious and loving. Amen. And now our sending forth. Lord, speak to us. 